Okay. Um, I don't normally have two distinguished uh, art historians talking about my work. Um, it's a great pleasure and an honor to be here and to receive the prize. I just regret that I can't speak to you in your language. Uh, I apologize. Uh, how I come to be in this situation and how, how I arrived at what I was doing. Uh, I was at uh, the Slade School in, in London in the very early 50s and I was a very good student. They gave me prizes in painting and sculpture and their most prized possession was drawing. Tom's Prize, which they gave me, and we thought, me and my friends, we thought we knew what art was all about. But then, they gave me a French government scholarship. So I could spend a year in Paris and find out what my contemporaries there were thinking, and it was so, so different from all I'd known before. Of course I knew Giacometti because Giacometti was a, a friend of my teacher at our school in, in England and had to say, and I had a letter of introduction to him and he, he was wonderful in the way that he gave up his time to talk to someone who was just a, a student, uh, unusual. I learned more from uh, talking to people in the cafes in Paris about art because the, the young ones like me they didn't have big studios to work in just a small room and one could do drawings perhaps but not much else but it was such a formative time for me that what they were asking was well not just how competent you were making drawings or paintings on it but what did it mean anymore? You know, to put the gloom, the post-war gloom behind us and to rethink what we might do for the future, how, how an artist uh, can influence what is going on in the world or not, or sell his work to ordinary people without it going just straight into a museum or a rich collection. Uh, so, we had ideas then about uh, how we could produce work that was uh, not expensive in itself, uh, out of very small things, and work in, in units, uh, prepared units so you could then relate one to another in maybe a series, or just one alone on its own. Because at that time, too, we knew, well, this is the beginning of the 60s by then, yeah? We had a number of friends, uh, like Francois Morley, and uh, Ancha, and Gerard, and Ravens, who were so helpful to me. And uh, uh, I was uh, like a foreigner and uh, landed in the middle of them, and uh, they were prepared to. Uh, helped me to understand what they were doing and therefore what I was doing also and we could exchange ideas. Um, a quotation from that time from Francois Morley that I make work for other people to bring their picnic. Picnic in French. <laughs> and uh, I, it's a very nice phrase that is also very like Francois Morley to his sense of humour fits so very well. Yeah. And, and the concept is, is what, what we believed in, yeah. these ideas. And I, I, I had an exhibition in, um, in Amsterdam at the Gallery Swat, which was a gallery that we all in some way or another were involved in. It's a very good gallery she was at that time. Yeah. And it was at the opening, uh, quite a few people turned up. And Ansha came a little bit later, and she looked around the walls at the things that I had there, and then the ones on the floor. 
when she first started laughing. And I thought, <coughs> how wonderful this is, that someone could respond to the work I made in this way, straight away. It was exactly what we wanted. Yeah? Um, some people were quite shocked. How could you come to an exhibition and laugh? But then, I last uh, met Peter two, maybe two years ago. Uh, but anyhow, we talked a bit and he was pulling my leg about an event that I'd taken part in here in this museum much earlier. Um, it, the idea of that exhibition was to invite a number of artists to come to talk about their work. Uh, I had, together with uh, Matthew, whatever he is, we, we had worked out an idea of something that would convey to people the difference between making sculpture and making painting. That sculpture is a, a physical activity, you know, and uh, you have to be able to work with your fingers, to put things together, see how they, they live together. And uh, he said, uh, Peter Rupert wanted this piece of work for his collection. And I, I explained to him that it was still in bits in my studio, and he said, well, okay, come to the gallery and put it together. Which is what I did. I came to the gallery and put it together, and then it ended up here. I had strong relations with Gallery Hoffman, and uh, happy times I've spent in the gallery. It's good space, good people, and uh, I'm very grateful to them. Thank you also for Christine being here. We have very good memories of Würzburg. When the first time we came here, Christine lost her very expensive camera. <laughs> she left it somewhere. And, and we thought, well, we'd never see it again. But somebody here picked it up and gave it in, and Christine got it back again. And that's marvelous. I mean, it could never happen in London or in Paris. <laughs> no, forget it. You know? That was wonderful. So we have the memories of your your time. <laughs> Christine has been photographing my work for the past forty something years. And so if I write my autobiography I, I cannot do it without her photographs. I can't make up stories to make my work, my life more interesting because the evidence is all there. She's my open book. <laughs> but thank you anyway, all of you. And thanks for being here. I'm very proud to be here. Thank you.